My name is Ron Novak, and I'm the executive director here for the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs at Syracuse University. Uh, I, I first uh, want—I first want to do uh, one thing, and, and that is for all of our veterans uh, and military-connected students that are that are uh, present today, or if they're not present, uh, we'll actually uh, review this uh, this video. Uh, later on. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for your service to our nation. Uh, thank you for wearing the nation's cloth uh, for your time and service. And we are we are very humbled for uh, about your uh, service to our nation and appreciate it. And then more importantly, uh, as you transitioned out of the military, uh, we also thank you for selecting Syracuse University uh, as your higher education uh, destination. I, I know you will not be uh, let down. Uh, Syracuse University is an absolutely amazing uh, institution and uh, the amount of resources that are here that are available for all of our uh, military connected students and veterans to use clearly separates us from many across the nation and that's why Syracuse University is the best place for veterans. Um, I just want to let everybody know quickly that, that we are recording this. So uh, I think that's important for everybody to know because if you know someone who uh, wanted to attend this session but's unable to, uh, we are going to uh, put this on uh, the OVMA website as well as share it on social media. Um, Questions and answers. I, I know you may have a lot uh, of questions. Uh, you can see uh, our agenda is pretty packed today. Uh, we have one hour to get through this and, and we did it in the fall semester. So I'm sure that we're, we're well trained and we'll get through here in the, uh, in the spring semester. But uh, if you have a question as you're going along, don't hesitate. You could just drop it in the chat room and our team will do their very best to, to answer that question. Uh, but uh, if we don't get to that question, uh, you know, we, we definitely will try to make some time here at the end. Uh, if you want to ask a question, uh, you know, in person, uh, we, we can certainly do that. Uh, Lauren's also, uh, during the course of this, uh, there's also a winter welcome resource fair that's virtual that's, uh, that's being sponsored by the university. She's going to drop that link in the chat room for everyone. Uh, so if, if you want to talk to Lauren a little bit more and, and go a little bit more in depth on your question, uh, she can certainly, uh, you know, answer that uh, during that time. So uh, again, here's the agenda. Uh, go ahead, uh, Lauren, to the next slide. Uh, we, we're very honored today to, to have uh, to have my boss, uh, Vice Chancellor Mike Haney. He's uh, he's an Air Force veteran. Uh, he's the uh, the founder and executive director for the Institute for Veterans and Military Families, the IVMF. Uh, he's also a tenured faculty member here at Syracuse University, and he's also the vice chancellor for Stra uh, Strategic Initiatives and Innovation. So I'm going to kick it over to Mike uh, for a welcome. Mike, Mike's yours. Thanks, Ron. Uh, much appreciated. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll echo what, what Ron said. We're, we're both uh, thankful for your service and, and, uh, and also thankful that you chose to pursue your post-service education at Syracuse University. Um, you might be able to tell from my background, I'm not in my office right now, I'm actually in Ensley Fieldhouse, which is uh, the Syracuse University football team's indoor practice facility. I'm, I'm sitting down here because in a few minutes, we're gonna open the doors of Ensley and, and start welcoming back students uh, for the fall semester. This is where our, our check-in is and our, our COVID testing operation. I have the I don't want to call it a privilege, but uh, one of my additional duties, just like uh, you know, when I was in the military, um, has been uh, head of our COVID response at Syracuse University all the way back since March. So, um, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm down here right now, not just to welcome students back, but to, to also make sure our our COVID testing um, and and compliance operation is is up and running and and supporting. Um, a safe return to campus this uh, this spring. So if any of you come through here over the next couple of days um, and see me wandering around, please make a point to uh, um, reach out and say hello. Um, probably don't reach out physically. We're not doing that right now, but <laughs> at a distance, reach out and say hello. Um, but again, welcome to all of you. As Ron said, I'm a, I'm an Air Force veteran. I My transition um, from military service was uh, was literally directly from active duty Air Force service 
um, to Syracuse University. Uh, that transition was about four days from when I took a uniform off to when I started at Syracuse University as a professor, which was uh, now it seems like ages ago. It was uh, back in 2006, 2007. Um, today, um, you know, I'm one of two vice chancellors of the university. Um, you know, I won't go through all the, the stuff that I'm responsible for, but what's most relevant here is I am um, responsible for all of our veteran and military connected programs across the university. And there are many. Um, Ron's going to talk to you and Ron and the team are going to talk to you about the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs after I wrap up, which is the, the infrastructure that's, that's really focused on you and is designed to support our student veterans. That said, we have military connected programs all over the university. Um, SU historically is a university that exists as it exists today, uh, honestly, because of military veterans. Up until World War II, we were a small liberal arts college that didn't have an enrollment more than about 4,000 students. And our World War II chancellor, a guy named Tully, um, was friends with President Roosevelt. And President Roosevelt asked uh, uh, Chancellor Tully and several other university presidents to figure out what to do with 12 and a half million returning World War II veterans. And what they came up with was the original GI Bill. And you know, as a consequence, Chancellor Tully opened the doors of this university to any returning World War II veteran that wanted a college degree, even if you hadn't finished high school. And we went from an enrollment in 1944 of about 4,200 students to within two years, just over 17,000 students on this campus. And that entire Delta were returning World War II veterans. And that decision really transformed this university from a, you know, a sleepy um, regional liberal arts college to a globally relevant um, international research institution. So, um, you know, all of you, what you represent, have a special place in the context of the history of this university. And and today, our current chancellor, my boss, uh, Ken Severud, has made a commitment back when he arrived in 2014 um, to position Syracuse University again to be the best private institution in the country supporting veterans and military connected students. So military children, military family members, military spouses. And, and we, we take that, um, that charge very seriously. So again, Ron's gonna talk to you about the, the Office of Veteran Military Affairs and, and the, the resources and infrastructure that are there to support you. You know, my, my one piece of counsel before I um, jump off here and start administering COVID tests is to encourage you to um, to uh, leverage your your experience in the military in the context of your educational journey here, but at the same time encourage you to make your time at Syracuse not just about being a student veteran. And what I mean by that is um, get out and experience what. Um, the, the college experience has to offer, what Syracuse University has to offer. Get out of the silo of, of, of being a veteran, um, retreat to it when necessary, but um, there, there are, um, there's a lot more to a residential college experience than what happens in a classroom. Um, clubs, activities, um, you know, oppor opportunities to hear from and learn from um, you know, globally relevant leaders, academic experts. Um, there's so much here, and I encourage you to take advantage of all of it during your time here, whether it's four years, two years, or, or you're here for, with us just for one. Um, please take advantage of everything this university has to offer. It's a it is a special place, as, as Ron said, um, and, and I encourage you to to soak up as much of it as you can um, during your time here. So with that, I will, uh, I'll say goodbye for now. You'll see plenty of me during your time here, by the way, um, but I, I do appreciate the opportunity to welcome all of you. So thanks so much, Ron, much appreciated. Thanks, Mike, appreciate it. And, and be safe out there at Ensley. Um, so as Mike said, uh, you know, the, uh, the Office of Veteran Military Affairs uh, is, is, is here to support uh, all of our veterans and military connected students. Uh, the office stood up roughly uh, six years ago uh, in January. And, uh, you know, our, our mission really is to, is to be that single point of entry for 
for anything uh, that any initiative or, or any uh, type of program, anything that looks like or smells like or feels like that it's going to support uh, a veteran uh, or a military connected student or a family member, uh, this office uh, has its hand in it. Uh, you'll hear military connected student uh, used a lot here on campus. And just to give you all uh, a sense of what that definition is, a military connected student as we call it, is a veteran. Uh, it's also an active duty guard or reservist who attends Syracuse University. We have many here at the university. Uh, our ROTC program, our cadets, both uh, in the Army ROTC and the Air Force ROTC, and then our military family members and spouses. Uh, back in 2014, when Chancellor Severu took over, that number collectively was uh, in the high 200s, low 300s. And uh, today we're sitting at about 1,275 uh, students, so a little over 500% increase uh, over the course of the last uh, last six years. We've also seen uh, over the course of this past six years uh, a uh, a retention rate uh, for our undergraduate student veterans and graduation rate increase from uh, in the 60 percentile into the high 80s, low 90s. So that, that will tell you the type of support uh, that you're gonna receive here. Uh, Lauren, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, here's our team uh, there, you know, Vice Chancellor. Uh, there's Lauren, she's the brain trust behind all this. Uh, she's our operations manager here at, at, the, at the Office of Veteran Military Affairs. And then you'll hear from Jennifer Pluta. Um, you know, one thing that, that really differentiates, uh, I believe Syracuse University from many other colleges and universities across the nation that that claim to support veterans is we have this this end-to-end -end support and it starts with our veterans admission team uh, many of you have spoken to them high-powered uh, team of teams there that that goes out and uh, uh, and recruits transitioning service members and their family members to attend Syracuse University and many of you probably either talk to Scott or Jessica or Austin uh, they do a phenomenal job and they're very integral uh, in the success of increasing our military connected student population here at Syracuse University. So we made that, that investment back six years ago. And then Jennifer Pluta is our veteran career services uh, assistant director. So her sole purpose is to ensure that each and every one of you in collaboration with the schools and colleges that you, uh, that you attend uh, with those respective uh, career services uh, directors make sure that you're hundred percent job placed. And she's achieved that uh, the last five years here at the university. Lauren, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, part of this uh, infrastructure, I'd like to say that this is the central nervous system right here. Uh, this is the heartbeat of the OVMA. Uh, this is our office of veteran success. Uh, if you are attending Syracuse University on uh, any type of veterans administration education be benefit, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, the post 9-11 GI Bill, you have probably spoken to, to one of these people here uh, on this slide. Keith Doss is a retired Navy senior chief, uh, is our assistant director. Uh, he's steering the ship down there for us. Carrie McKinkle is one of our school certifying officials. You've probably spoken with her. She's a Marine Corps veteran. We've got Ste Stephanie Cipriano, who's focusing um, primarily on our online graduate programs. Although not, not a veteran, very passionate about supporting our military connected population and has been doing this for a number of years. And Sarah Gillette uh, works down there. She's a, an Air Force spouse. And then Chad Juneman, Juneman is a Navy veteran. Uh, a new member of our team there on the far right is Tammy Hughey. Uh, she's our vet success uh, on campus uh, counselor. We are very fortunate to have, uh, we're one a university of about 100 across the United States that has uh, a VSOC counselor, really the face of the Veterans Administration. And Tammy will be briefing you all here in a couple of minutes uh, about uh, what uh, capabilities and resources she brings uh, here. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and transition over to uh, to Jennifer Pluta. Jennifer, uh, Veteran Career Services. Great. Thank you, Ron. 
Um, first, I just want to thank everyone for attending today's uh, presentation. I think you're going to find the information really useful, and I hope that you're taking feverish notes. Again, I'm Jennifer Pluta. I'm the Assistant Director of Veteran Career Services. And my role here at Syracuse University is support to support your uh, career journey, right? So that's providing you with a, the number of resources um, and services. And Lauren, you can go to the next slide. Perfect. And this is just a little snapshot here of the different types of services and events and programs that, are, that um, I administer here through Syracuse University. Um, I know right now it's a little difficult um, to do some of these uh, events, but um, you know we will be working on alternatives as we move forward in this new environment. I'm located at the NVRC in the Office of Veteran Success, and um, you know as you can see, I'm right here. I'm on the floor of Marshall Street, so you can stop by, or, or if you want to check out, um, you know where we're located. Uh, also, I'll be sending each of you an email today after this presentation with information on resources that you can access, some of them that are, are listed here. I do want to let, let you know about two things since I have your attention, which is um, we do have an internship award to help our student veterans uh, meet that financial obligation in order to do the internship. So this is gonna help with that financial gap. Um, that's, you're gonna get some information on that. So, you know, I wanna encourage you while you're here at Syracuse University to take an internship. Um, and I also wanna encourage you to take advantage of these services. There's never an early time, it's never too early to, to take advantage of these. And that would be my advice to you. Um, again, I don't want to, I know we have a, a jam-packed uh, presentation today, um, but I do want to echo um, what Mike Haney said, which is don't, you know, to get involved, right? That's the biggest regret I hear from our student veterans is they let this time go by and not put and not get involved, right? I, it, usually student veterans hold themselves back or they're not too sure or maybe feel out of place, but it is the number one regret of our students is they didn't try new things. So you're only here once, right? You only are gonna have this opportunity once. And I just wanna encourage you to take advantage of it. Just like Mike, uh, just like Ron said, um, to go to the, the welcome fair that'll be later on. Lauren provided that information. So definitely get yourself out there and you know, take take a risk, you know, try new things. And again, I look forward to connecting with you all and welcome to Syracuse University. Hey, thanks, Jen. Go ahead. Next slide, Lauren. Uh, Office of Veteran Success, success. Uh, Keith Doss, over to you. Great, thank you, Ron. Well, welcome everyone. Um, and just I just wanted to make a couple of points this morning and, and also in just a minute, I'm gonna have uh, two uh, of our school certifying officials, Carrie McKinkle and, and Stephanie Cipriano, uh, just pop in and, and say a couple of words. Um, but, but, you know, as Ron mentioned, our, our biggest main mission here is VA education benefits. So regardless of what type of education benefit you're using, um, you know, if you haven't touched base with our office yet, you, you sure will. Um, you know, one thing to keep in mind is, you know, VA regulations, just like in the military, um, are, are changing, right? They, they can change at a moment's notice. Uh, we have a very dedicated, hardworking team. We keep up on all these changes that, that come up uh, from the VA. Uh, um, and, you know, a lot of times what we have to do is really decipher uh, what I call the VA language into plain language. Um, so if you're having any difficulties at all uh, with the VA as far as education benefits, please, please just reach out, you know, to our office um, and we'll, you know, we'll do everything we can. If we, if we don't have the answers for you, you know, right on hand, we'll, we'll absolutely um, get them, you know, for you. So um, yeah, at the, uh, here at the NVRC, just you know, another point is that, you know, we, we have two, um, you know, places that are totally dedicated for you. Uh, one is the Student Veterans Lounge uh, that's right next to our office, and the other is a quiet study area. Uh, although due to COVID, we have limited capacity, we've had to reduce 
capacity uh, with social distancing and whatnot, um, please feel free to use that throughout the semester. Uh, it's a great area. Um, there's still some finishing touches, I'll say, that are, that's being done throughout the entire building, including the student veterans lounge. Uh, but please, again, feel free to, to use those. Um, yeah, so right now I'd like to just have Carrie and Stephanie, just so you can put a name to a face, just pop in real quick and, and give a few words. So good morning, everyone. As I've been introduced several times, my name is Carrie McKinkle. Um, I am going to be your primary school certifying official here while you're at Syracuse University. Um, Stephanie helps me out when she can and when I desperately need it. Um, so I did five years in the Marine Corps. Um, also, I'm currently using my benefits, so I know the process, know what you guys are going through. Um, so if you plan on using your benefits and you haven't reached out to me, please do so um, as the slide shows. That's our main email address. So any one of us will see your email if you reach out to that email or call the main line. Um, and then if you have any questions for us during the presentation, you can drop them in the chat box and I can check them and answer them for you. Good morning, everybody. And I'm Stephanie Cipriano. I'm the other school certifying official. Um, as it's previously been mentioned, my primary um, population is our online students, but certainly as Carrie, Keith, and Ron mentioned, I'm happy to help, so certainly feel free to reach out. I'm glad to help to assist you in any way, kind of using your benefits here. So welcome, everybody. Okay, Ron, uh, I think that does it for OVS. Uh, back to you. Yep, thanks a lot, Keith. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, Tammy Hughie, our vet success on campus. Go ahead, Tammy. Mike is yours. Morning. I'm Tammy Hugi, and uh, I have to confess I'm still a little new to this position, so I'm going to rely on my notes uh, on this side. Uh, but I want to just tell you a little bit about the services I can provide um, and who might be eligible for those services. Uh, veterans uh, who are currently using any kind of VA education benefit are probably eligible for the services that I provide. Dependents using transferred education benefits from a family member are probably eligible for all of the services I provide. Uh, if you are discharged or released from active duty under conditions other than dishonorable, if not more than one year has elapsed since the date of discharge, and if you're currently serving on active duty with the US Armed Forces and are within 180 days of the estimated date of discharge. Um, so some of the services I provide you do need to be found eligible, but not all of them. Um, so don't worry about whether you're eligible or not. Just give me a call and let's talk. Um, some of the services I can provide are uh, adjustment counseling to help complete, help you complete your education programs and find employment, um, vocational testing and advising, uh, educational and career counseling. I can expedite the VRNE services as a VSOC I fall under the Vocational Readiness and Employment, which used to be Vocational Rehabilitation and Employment. Um, I've worked as a voc rehab counselor for 10 years, very familiar with those services. Um, and as a VSOC, if you're interested in using the VRNE services, I can expedite your application and your entitlement uh, decision. Um, and I can provide general support and assistance um, if you're having problems with um, keeping up with academics or stress or whatever it is. If it's something that you're having difficulty with and you're not quite able to resolve it on your own, give me a call. Let's figure it out together. Uh, my contact information can be found online at the Office of Veterans Success Staff. Um, I do have office hours on Wednesday mornings and Friday afternoons. Um, I use WebEx and the connection to that is also found at the Office of Veteran Success Staff site as well. And I am just excited for your new beginning. Uh, I also graduated from SU and uh, it has led, led me to this. It has led me to this position where I get to work as a folk rehab counselor and I have the honor of working with veterans. Uh, so thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Tammy. Uh, we, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Beth Kubala. She's the director of our Veterans Legal Clinic. Uh, we're very fortunate to have this resource here uh, right at, on the Syracuse University campus over in the, uh, the College of Law. Beth, over to you. 
Thank you, Ron. Good morning, everyone. You've just heard a lot about the resources that are available on campus to assist you with your VA educational benefits. Well, we also have a place where we can assist you with any questions you might have about your VA healthcare benefits. The Veterans Legal Clinic is twofold. It is located within Deneen Hall, the law school. We train student attorneys to provide critical legal resources to our community's veterans. And we mainly focus on VA benefits applications and uh, discharge upgrades. If you have other issues, uh, we're happy to help refer you to someone who may be able to assist you. So if you are in the process of applying for benefits, you haven't applied yet, or you have any general questions about how to go about doing so, please contact our office and we'd be happy to assist. I will also briefly share that uh, while many of you may be, be, may be beginning your um, undergraduate journey here, please keep in mind, you, we have a fantastic law school right down the hill, and we have a very robust military connected population, both within the halls of Deneen as residential students and also virtually. Syracuse is very proud to have the first nationally accredited by ABA uh, online JD program, and that's called the JDI. Uh, whether or not you have um, friends or family members who are located at different places all over the globe, they can attend virtually and receive their law degree just as if they were here in person. So lots of options for uh, your higher education goals. If you have any questions about working with our office in uh, finalizing your VA healthcare benefits or compensation, please reach out to us. And if you have any questions along your educational journey here at Syracuse about pursuing a law degree, we'd be very excited to talk to you about that as well. So excited that you're here on campus and look forward to meeting all of you. Hey, thanks a lot, Beth. Uh, this next office uh, is really important, and I would I would certainly asterisk the Center for Fellowship and Scholarship Advising. Many great opportunities uh, are act actually come out of this uh, office, uh, and uh, Jolyn Parker is the director of CIFSA. So, Jolyn, kick it over to you. Thanks for uh, attending today. Thanks, Ron. Hi, I'm JoLynn Parker. I direct the Center for Fellowship and Scholarship Advising. Um, thanks for being here this morning and welcome to Syracuse University. I want to tell you a little bit about Center for Fellowship and Scholarship Advising and what CIFSA can, can do for you. So our mission is to help outstanding students learn about, um, prepare for, and apply to national scholarships. And national scholarships are merit-based awards that are external to Syracuse University, so they have a national applicant pool. And these awards can fund things like undergraduate and graduate tuition, research and teaching opportunities abroad, foreign language learning, and other opportunities. Uh, you might recognize the names of some national scholarships, things like Fulbright, or the Rhodes Scholarship or the Tillman Scholars Program, which many of you may have heard of because it's specifically for veterans and military spouses. Um, other awards may be a bit less familiar, things like the Critical Language Scholarship or the Boren Fellowship or the Gilman Scholarship, all of which fund foreign language learning or study abroad. Uh, but there are many others and we wanna help you become familiar with your options. Our goal is to help you pursue your interests and realize your academic potential in a way that will make you competitive for national awards and to work with you to facilitate applications. Uh, we're here to assist with all stages of the application process from planning to submitting your application to interviews. Uh, veterans can be particularly strong candidates for national awards. You arrive on campus with leadership experience and maturity a demonstrated commitment to public service, global awareness, and a lot of other qualities that national scholarships value. And candidates tend to find that beyond whatever benefits an award gives, the process of applying for an award and putting together that application can be very, very useful. Um, it will help you clarify your academic and professional goals and develop writing and interview skills. 
Um, I've had the very good fortune to work with many student veterans on applications, um, and I see that you're going to hear from one of them uh, later in this in this session, Laura Byes, who is a 2020 Tillman Scholar. Um, and I think Laura is going to be talking about her work as the Disability Services Liaison, but I'm hoping maybe she'll put in a, a plug for SIFSA and the Tillman Scholarship as well. Um, SIFSA's team includes me, Melissa Welshans, our assistant director, and Adam Crowley, who's an advisor. And Melissa and Adam and I all hope that you'll connect with us to discuss how your interests and goals can match up with national scholarship opportunities. You can reach out by email um, or fill out the register with SIFSA form that's on our website uh, at nationalscholarships.syr.edu. Um, so I look forward to meeting you and I hope you'll reach out about how SIFSA can help you. Thanks. Back to you, Ron. Okay, thank you, Jolyn. Uh, next organization I'm going to uh, introduce is the Institute for Veterans and Military Families. Uh, you'll hear both the IVMF and the OVMA used interchangeably on campus. I think the best way to delineate the two is, you know, the Institute looks nationally uh, in assisting transitioning service members and their families uh, into a myriad of programs, which Linda's going to go ahead and, and discuss. And then, of course, uh, the Office of Veteran Military Affairs really looks down and in and supporting everything here on campus. So Linda and the team have some amazing opportunities that are available to all of you that are that are here. So uh, Linda, over to you. Uh, and thanks for attending today. Sure. Thank you, Ron. Um, good morning and welcome to Syracuse University. And thank you so much for your service. In turn, let me share with you how we serve those who have served. Um, again, I'm Linda Nellis. I'm with the Institute for Veterans and Military Families. You can go to the next slide, please. The audience that we serve is active duty service members who are about six months from planning to separate or retire, National Guards and reservists who are serving part time, veterans who have already separated with an honorable discharge, and spouses of any of the above who are not themselves in any of the above mentioned categories. Our audience is seeking resources for career transition and lifelong employability, support for their business and attention to all other factors of their life needs. Next slide, please. Um, let me summarize what we offer by first mentioning our career preparation and employment portfolio. Onward to Opportunity provides training and industry certification to complement military and life experience. The program also provides guidance for transitioning from military to civilian space in form of resume updates, interview skills, and connections to over 900 employer partners who welcome employees with military connected backgrounds. Our entrepreneurship uh, programs and services are designed to support the journey of an entrepreneur, regardless of where their business falls in the spectrum of ideation to growth or to pivoting a business, as you can see happening in the current pandemic. The America Serves portfolio connects our audience to thoroughly vetted resources, which help meets housing, financial, family service needs, and more. Being at Syracuse University, which does have a research one reputation. We also have a research and evaluation team. And this team helps tell the story based on data collected through approved research to um, help inform pro program decisions as well as national policy. All this is brought at no monetary cost um, to those who have served. And we're able to do this because of funders and industry partners. What we require of program participants is their time commitment to participate in the right program and to stay connected. Next slide, please. Our audience is global and several of our programs are offered either partially or entirely online. For Onward to Opportunity, we're on locations at 18 military installations and satellite locations. Next slide, please. The IVMF Enrollment Service Team is here to help answer any questions about programs and your specific needs and goals. So please do contact us when we're relevant for your next steps. And thank you again for joining today. That's it. Thanks, Ron.
Hey, thank you so much, Linda. A lot of information there, everybody, and, and you're really just scratching the surface on what the Institute can, can provide. So I, I would certainly uh, recommend if you do get an opportunity, just you know, look up their website uh, and, and take a look at the myriad of uh, programs and services they provide. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Abby. Uh, you know, we are very fortunate to have, and she's been a great partner with us now for the last uh, six years. Uh, but the OVMA has a dedicated uh, liaison librarian, which is which is Abby. It can help you with a lot of the research uh, uh, that that you're going to be doing while you're here at at uh, at Syracuse University. So uh, over to you, Abby, and thanks for attending today. Thank you, Ron, and um, thank you all for having me. Welcome um, to Syracuse University. Um, I'm Abby Kazowitz Shear. Um, I'm a librarian in the Department of Learning and Academic Engagement at Syracuse University Libraries. And as Ron mentioned, I am the library liaison to OVMA. Um, we have a lot of services and resources available to you. Um, so I'll just give you a, a brief overview. Um, and also I'll mention that I will also be at the virtual um, resource fair later on today. We'll have library um, representation there for the whole thing if you wanna learn more. Um, first thing I wanted to mention is that we have um, a special guide on our website um, of veteran and military affiliated student resources. So um, after my presentation, I'll put the link in the chat box so you can check it out. But I um, just wanted to let you know that it has a lot of um, resources for you. It has information about the research process in general and about using library resources, as well as links to veteran and military related resources found in the library, including in our special collections and um, Syracuse University Archives Department, um, as well as other institutions. And it includes links to veterans associations and organizations on and off campus as well. So it's really a wealth of information and resources. Um, and it was designed, um, I designed it along with colleagues, including um, a student veteran who was serving as a um, graduate student employee at the time. And we do update it frequently. Um, as far as library services for spring 2021, we have um, physical resources here on campus and in, in our libraries, as well as many, many virtual resources. So I urge you to get to know our library website. Um, it's a great place to connect to all kinds of resources, both print and virtual. Um, just to give you a little bit of an overview about the library system here at Syracuse University, we have three main buildings that are part of the SU Libraries um, organization. It's Bird Library, and you can see a little picture behind me, um, my background, that is Bird Library. That's our main library for social sciences and humanities resources, our special collections. Um, and we also have the Carnegie Library, which is located on the quad. That's um, an older building um, with many stairs leading up to the entrance. And that has a lot of our science and technology um, resources. And then we have the King and King Architecture Library located in Slocum Hall with obviously architecture related resources, architectural drawings and things like that. Um, all of our buildings will be open as of tomorrow. Bird has been open. Um, the others will open as of tomorrow to all current students, faculty, and staff. You'll just need your IDs to enter. Um, our hours are on the website. Um, just for an example, Bird Library is open Monday through Thursday, 7.45 a.m. to midnight, and then Saturday noon to 10 p.m., and Sunday noon to midnight. So we do try to stay open as much as possible. This semester um, is a little bit different. Um, you know, normally, we're open even more hours, but um, you know we need to have time to um, clean the building and sanitize and things like that. Um, just to give you some more information about what we do, obviously you can check out books. You can either come into the building and check them out yourself, or you can request um, to have them held for you for a contactless pickup or delivery. Um, we have printing in the library, self-service printing. You will use your uh, print quota that's provided to you. Um, we have standard size printing as well as poster printing on our plotter machines. We have public workstations. We also um, have 
laptops and other equipment that you can borrow, you can check out from the library. Um, we have some study spaces, lots of variety of study spaces, quiet study, we have um, individual study rooms, as well as just open study spaces. Um, we have a cafe, Pages Cafe, and that's the one place in the library where you can eat right now. Um, we may be looking into other spaces, but we are trying to limit um, areas to eat right now. Um, and most importantly, I think, as I mentioned before, we have many electronic resources available to you. Um, over 700 databases that provide access to articles, audio and video resources, statistics, maps, all kinds of things. We have eBooks, e-journals. Um, all you have to do is um, connect to the library website to access these resources. If you are off campus, you'll be asked to log in with your NetID. Um, one final thing I'll mention, a couple quick things. Uh, we have workshops that we're offering this spring on a variety of topics, anything from getting started with your research to um, learning how to use citation management tools. Somebody's even offering an escape room um, session finding scholarly sources. And uh, one, that I want to meant, uh, one that I want to take myself is Habits for Maintaining a Healthy Information Diet. So look for our spring workshop schedule. It's open to everyone on Zoom. Um, and we hope you'll be able to attend at least some of those. Um, and finally, if you need help, please reach out and ask. That's what we're there for. We have chat services. We have, we're available by phone, email. You can come in um, and talk to somebody at our service desks if you have a quick question, but please do reach out for us, reach out to us. We are here to help you with your research and anything else um, that you have questions about. Um, so with that, I welcome you again and thank you for your service. Hey, thanks a lot, Abby. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to kick it over to uh, our president and, uh, and vice president of the Student Veteran Organization, uh, Charlie Pogue and Amanda Sullivan. I just want to make a note that the Syracuse University uh, SVO chapter is one of the national finalists for the Student Veterans of America uh, National Chapter of the Year. So uh, yeah, I let the cat out of the bag a little bit, Charlie, but uh, I say that only only as a point of reference that the, our student veteran organization is, is absolutely amazing. They do a lot of great work uh, and support uh, our veterans. And uh, even in a time uh, of this pandemic, uh, they've been doing uh, many things uh, to assist. So uh, Charlie, I'm going to kick it over to you and, and thanks for attending today. Absolutely. Glad to be here and thank, thanks for having us. Um, Hello, welcome to Syracuse University. Um, thanks to Ron, we, yeah, just acknowledging that uh, you are coming to a, a very amazing place as far as the access that you're going to have different opportunities. Uh, the SVO just kind of stands as, as one of those, we're your official uh, student organization. We're not a part of the OVMA, IVMF, or the official capacity of the uh, university by chance, but more just a, a student organization that is specifically for student veterans, uh, military connected family members. And we do also open the doors to uh, those just students that are interested in veteran issues, wanting to support veterans and things like that. Um, we are also the local chapter for the Student Veterans of America, which is uh, a great organization that does a lot of legislative work in advancing uh, in veteran policies pertaining particularly to education and uh, transition into uh, occupations. We right now, uh, we are trying to spin back up into this next semester. Everything kind of got side uh, railed last semester due to COVID and trying to jumble what we can safely do and can't do. Uh, but we do have a meeting going this afternoon at three o'clock. Uh, I'll post the link to that in the room, but you're more than welcome to attend. Uh, it's just trying to get us back on track with this semester and, and what we're trying to achieve. It is a great organization. None of the uh, accolades as far as the, the national recognition with uh, chapter of the year uh, nomination, that's because of our membership. Um, you're gonna have access to do amazing things, uh, especially in research, engineering and stuff like that while you're here. And that gets this university a lot of attention because our student veterans are, are the ones doing incredible things while they're here. So um, I wish you the best and enjoy your time here. We're here to help you. Uh, think of us as kind of a, 
a camaraderie organization, but I do want to implore, like uh, Dr. Haney said, go out and find an organization that's not just veteran or military related, something you're passionate about, a hobby, something that you can connect with here on the university uh, other than military, but that's also why we're here is for the camaraderie. Uh, Amanda, did you want to say anything? She's in here, right? Yeah. Uh, vice, she's the vice president, so there you go. Take it over. I'm done. <laughs> that's all good. Um... Welcome to Syracuse University. We're happy to have you here. Uh, it definitely presents different challenges with COVID, but we want to hear from you. We want to um, be engaged and create programming that is gonna be impactful for your time here. So um, definitely reach out. Um, like Charlie said, I dropped the link into the chat. So at 3 p.m. if you wanna just pop in and you'll hear from Jennifer Pluta um, about some veteran career services information and in more in depth. So please come by and we look forward to connecting. Okay, thanks a lot, Charlie and Amanda. I'm going to turn it over to Dan Rubio. He's our peer advisors for veterans education or PAVE team leader. Amazing resource to help uh, all of you as you transition into Syracuse University. I would imagine that Dan and his team have already reached out to a number of you. So Dan, over to you. Thanks for attending today. Hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Ron. Uh, welcome to Syracuse University. Uh, thank you for your service. Uh, yes, you should have heard from me at least uh, through email. I'll give you a little background on the PAVE. Uh, Peer Advisors for Veteran Education was started by uh, the University of Michigan's Military Support Programs and Networks because they realized that the transition from military to civilian uh, education can be pretty difficult for some people. So they set up this program. Uh, it's across 45 campuses across the country. Uh, I'm the team leader. Uh, and uh, all of our advisors are volunteers, all student veterans that have spent some time here, and they're all knowledgeable on what's going on. Um, they can help you, lead you to resources, just give you advice, maybe point you some of those to some places that aren't veteran that everybody's been trying to, you know, tell you to open up and don't just bottle up yourself. Uh, come ask us questions. You can email me or call me anytime. You guys should have all of my uh, contact information already. Uh, yeah, we stand ready to help you out. Have a good day. Thanks again, Dan. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce our 2020 Tillman Scholar, uh, Laura Bies. Uh, she also she's she also serves as our Disability Services Liaison, our DSL. Uh, we're very fortunate to have her not only here as a student but also. Uh, supporting our veterans uh, as a, a, in a DSL capacity. So, uh, Laura, over to you. Thanks for attending today. Thank you, and hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm Laura Bies. I am your Disability Services Liaison. I'm a disabled Air Force veteran and Master of Social Work student. I'm also the 2020 Tillman Scholar. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about the amazing Pat Tillman Foundation, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to myself or Joe Lynn, who can help you um, apply for their annual scholarship. It's such a gift. Um, so as far as Disability Services Liaison goes, or DSL, um, every single student vet is eligible to receive this service because a disability is any condition of the body or mind that makes it more difficult to do certain activities and interact with the world. So if you're coping with a disability currently or you even feel like you don't have a disability at this time, still just make a little mental note of my information, DSL, we're here to help you because these are the things that we don't plan to happen. Um, nobody plans for their anxiety to get to a crippling level midway through the semester. No one plans to throw out their back or have a service connected uh, condition flare up or a million and one other things that can happen. Um, so just keep this in mind. This is a confidential program that will connect you to supports and resources on campus and in the community. The goal of the DSL program is to help you feel at ease, empowered and supported throughout your academic journey. Slide please. So there is so much I can help you with. 
Uh, but one of the main things I do is uh, help you receive accommodations through the Center for Disability Resources or CDR here at Syracuse University. Um, they have so many things for students. There's academic and support and tutoring. Um, part of this is there's a, even a strategist that'll help you plan how to get your assignments done um, and set out study time. There's alternative format and adaptive technology. The LiveScribe pens are super helpful um, and uh, popular. And that's another one of those things that you just don't plan for. You know, you could be in class and you can't keep up with the professor. Um, so, and, and you're like, what do I do? Well, call me and we will make sure that you um, get the resources and accommodations that you need. You're, you're not alone. Um, and this can be done at any time. They also help with mobility accommodations. The additional transit time is a big one um, for student veterans. And back to the classroom adjustments, the additional test taking time, that's a really big one. Um, they also process service animal requests, and there is a ton of other off-campus and wellness resources that I can help link you up with. The Syracuse VA Medical Center is absolutely amazing. You can get any kind of healthcare you need and what they can't provide, they can send you out. Um, and it's a little complicated to get started, but fear not, we, we got your back. Uh, there's the Vet Center, the Behavioral Health Center, Clear Path for Veterans, and so much more. So um, you have my email address on the previous slide and also my direct phone number. So email me, call me, text me if you're to the point uh, because some things happen in this semester that we don't see coming and you can't even open your emails. I am the person to call and we'll help get you, get you moving. So welcome to Syracuse University. I'm so excited for you. Laura, thank you so much uh, for that information. Uh, so here's some upcoming events I just wanted to bring to, uh, to your attention. Uh, each month uh, we do a, uh, used to do uh, pre-COVID a virtual or a, uh, a lunch with Vice Chancellor Haney where we had the opportunity to sit down and, and over lunch uh, have a discussion with him. He gets to know you, you get to know him and provide him feedback on, on what you're seeing on campus and how we can make uh, our community better here on campus. Uh, we transitioned uh, into a virtual discussion uh, during COVID. So uh, we haven't quite yet uh, determined those spring dates, but we will uh, let you know uh, either through email or social media uh, from our office, or we'll also turn to Charlie and Amanda uh, to be able to get those, to provide those dates and times. Uh, I would ask you to mark February 17th at noon if you can if you can make it. Uh, each month we do an Office of Veteran Military Affairs uh, virtual lunch. Again, pre-COVID, these were in person. We had free food, and uh, we bring in guest speakers to uh, to be able to provide us uh, information session for you over the co uh, course of that hour. Uh, and it also gives an opportunity to meet each other, a, a point of camaraderie. And uh, and we get to have we get to eat lunch together, so that's that's really cool. But this this year uh, and during the spring semester, it, it's going to be a virtual session. But ideally, and we have our fingers crossed, going into the fall semester next year, these will be in person. And then lastly is uh, Student Veterans of America National Conference. Each year, uh, the Student Veterans of America uh, sponsors a national conference uh, throughout the United States. Uh, they'll pick a destination. Places like uh, Disney, Disney World, and Disneyland. Both we've been to Florida and California. Uh, we've also been to San Antonio, Texas. Um, but uh, this year's event's going to be uh, virtual. This is the largest professional development session for our student veterans. Uh, and I would ask that uh, if you do have time, February 19th and 20th, uh, uh, it's a two day session. There's some great breakout sessions and information that's provided to all of our student veterans. Uh, we have uh, Rosie uh, Mari from the Institute for Veterans and Military Families and Jennifer Pluta uh, presenting uh, at one of the breakout sessions there. So, uh, but uh, if you want to, there's the registration link. And I believe the first thousand students, uh, the registration fee is waivered. And I still believe that that's 
that that stands to be true. Yep, Charlie's shaking his head, so I'm taking my lead off the Marine there. Uh, he's giving me good information. So please, if you get the opportunity, it's a Friday and Saturday. It's it's a great, great opportunity. Go ahead, next slide, Lauren. Um, this is a resource guide. This is really a roll up of, of all the resources uh, that were either here today, the points of contact, their phone numbers and emails. Go ahead, next slide. And also other organizations that may have not been here today, uh, like Hendricks Chapel, Saisha Burt, amazing resource. Uh, if you wanna know what's going on in the community, you have a question about Hey, where's a good restaurant? Hey, where's a good place to get my hair cut? Hey, what about childcare? Saisha, born in Syracuse, raised in Syracuse, has a, a family here in Syracuse, just an amazing person and resource to get to connect to. And then there's a host of other, other resources here for you as well. Uh, go ahead to the, to the last slide, uh, Lauren. Are there any questions out there from anyone? We've got about three or four minutes left. Uh, Lauren, is there any questions in the chat room or are there any questions uh, that we need to answer there? Uh, there's no questions in the chat room right now. If anybody has questions, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, but I've also a couple of times, and I'll do it more time, drop the Zoom link to um, the Winter Welcome Orientation. We'll have a room over there too. So you can jump over to that um, Zoom uh, breakout room if you'd like next, if you want to have time to discuss. Awesome. No, thanks, Lauren. I will wait if anybody has a question. Okay, if not, I just want to leave you all with uh, all of our, our new uh, veterans and military connected students that are attending today or will be watching this later on. Um, just some, some words of advice, uh, having been here for six years in this role and in supporting a lot of veterans and military connected students that have that have transitioned through Syracuse University, attained their degrees, uh, achieved their academic success and, and their professional success here at, at Syracuse. A couple of things, and, and some folks hinted on this earlier. One, stay connected. Uh, please stay connected. Uh, oftentimes we find that uh, those vet, you know, veterans that don't stay connected, uh, you know, as, as Jennifer said, you know, big regret gosh, I, I didn't know all these resources were here. God, I wish I would have stayed, stayed connected early. Please do. We're here, we're here to support you. I know a lot of times uh, veterans will say, I don't want anything to do with the military. I'm done. That chapter's over. I get it. We, we all have gone through that. But we're here to, to make sure that you're successful. And all of the resources that we have available uh, we can connect you with. Uh, and, and so please stay connected. I'd ask that you take a look at, you know, however you get your information, you'll get emails. You're going to get a lot of email uh, from the university on your syr.edu account. Just ask that if you do see something coming in about veteran work, whether it's from the DSL or from Charlie and the SVO or from the Office of Veteran Military Affairs or a number of opportunities uh, and emails that Jennifer Plute is going to send out to you. Please don't don't delete those. Uh, read those. If you're not an email person and you like to get it through social media, ask that this weekend you take an opportunity to to go on to whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and sign up for uh, the uh, and follow the SVO and Pave and OVMA. And then also the IVMF as well, because there's a, a lot of opportunities is there, uh, from all of those organizations to be here to support you. So please stay connected. The other part was also goes without saying, stay engaged. Stay engaged, you know, attend one of the SVO um, uh, meetings. You'd be surprised, uh, you know, a few years back uh, at one of the at one of the meetings, we had uh, we had two veterans who were Marines that served in the same infantry unit. Didn't even know both of them were were here at Syracuse University. Knew both they both knew that they transitioned out of the military or out of the Marine Corps, but didn't know that both were sitting right here at Syracuse University. So, you know, you're going to have an opportunity to to meet a lot of amazing people uh, along this journey uh, at, here at Syracuse. So please stay engaged. And then the last thing I, I just want to leave you all with, uh, you know, transition is, is a pretty daunting task. Uh, th there's a baseball player by the name of Willie Stargell 
Uh, he was a first baseman. He's a, he's a hall of famer. He's a first baseman for the Pittsburgh pirates. Uh, and part of the 1979 World Series champion Pittsburgh Pirates. We are family. That, that was their motto. But, but Willie Stargell said, we are always in a perpetual state of transition. So think about that. You know, we're always in transition, whether it's in our personal lives, our professional lives. We're always going through some type of transition. This is a big transition, uh, transitioning into higher education. But I will tell you that it, it is not insurmountable. There are so many people that have come before you uh, that I've seen and, and, and other people that are here on, on, uh, you know, on this Zoom session that have watched people uh, go through Syracuse University, achieve their degree and become successful. Uh, and all of you can, will be just that uh, if you stay connected and you stay engaged. So I just ask you all, you know, as, as veterans, we all have it in our DNA not to ask for help because we're going to figure it out, damn it. We're all going to figure this thing out. I'm going to figure it out if it takes me to stay up until three or four o'clock in the morning or pull an all-nighter and be on a caffeine high. Look, I've been there. I've done it. Uh, Charlie Pogue's done it. I'm sure Laura's done it. We've all done it. But I will tell you, uh, in higher education, you've got to ask for help early and often. There's a lot of people here that are going to help you uh, in your academic success, in your student success, and everybody that's here today and a host of other people will literally drop what they're doing to help you. So please uh, ask for help early and often. Again, uh, thanks for attending this session today. Thank you for your service to our great nation, and thank you for choosing Syracuse University, which is the best place for veterans. Thanks a lot, and take care, everybody.